In this problem, we are given an insulating sphere with total charge Q coulomb. Now, because the sphere is an insulating sphere, we can say that the charge is distributed uniformly through the volume of the sphere. And we want to find out electric fields at points A and B. Let us see if we can do this using Gauss law because the charge distribution is nice and symmetric. And we will learn how to use Gauss law for these kind of charge distribution. So what Gauss law gives us is that integral E dot dA, that is the surface integral of E over a Gaussian surface, which essentially is E dA cos theta because that's my dot product, is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon 0. Now, how can I use Gauss law to find electric field at any point? Say I'm talking about point A. Looking at this equation, what I can say is that if I have some Gaussian surface that passes through point A, and if I know this, what is the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface, and if I can find out this surface integral, then by solving it, I can find out what is the electric field at point A. And let us see what that means. Because solving the surface integral is not easy for any surface. However, if I pick a Gaussian surface such that one is that E can be argued as uniform over the Gaussian surface. So E is uniform over my surface that I choose. What will happen to my integral is that E will come out of my integral and the integral just remains dA cos theta. The second trick that I use to choose the Gaussian surface that will make my integral easy is I'll choose a Gaussian surface such that at each point E is either parallel to dA or E is perpendicular to dA. And what that gives me is in this case theta is equal to 0 and so my integral E dA cos theta essentially becomes integral this because cos theta is 1. And in this case what happens is theta is equal to 90 and so my integral because cos theta uh, cos 90 is 0 my integral actually becomes 0. So let us see how we can choose a Gaussian surface that helps us in getting these kind of cases. And usually the answer lies in exploiting the, uh, the symmetry of the charge distribution. So here my charge distribution is spherically symmetric. Let us see what happens if I choose a spherical Gaussian surface. So I choose a spherical Gaussian surface going through point A and just a minute and say this is my radius r of the sphere. Now what happens? The charge distribution inside this Gaussian surface is a spherical uniform and so I can say that at each point on this Gaussian surface E is radial and so at each point on this Gaussian surface my E is going to be radial and I can also argue that at each point at a distance r from the center of the sphere because the sphere has uniformly distributed charge, E is constant. So what I got now is case A where R is greater than A. I got two cases. Uh, I got two things. E is parallel to dA at each point because dA for the sphere is going to be radial to and E is constant over the surface. So what happens is when I apply Gauss law, my integral E dot dA essentially gets simplified to E integral dA. And this integral dA is just the surface area of my sphere. Now remember, this is a Gaussian sphere which is enclosed my original sphere. So it's a sphere inside a sphere and the outer sphere being the Gaussian sphere. And this is equal to Q enclosed. So the Q enclosed is my entire original sphere with a total charge Q over epsilon 0. And I can write that as E 
times 4 pi r square q is equal to q over epsilon 0 and that becomes essentially e is equal to 1 over 4 pi r square q over epsilon 0 and 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 is k so I can also write this as k q over r square and that is the electric field at point A due to my sphere with charge Q uniformly distributed on it. Now, if you look at this equation, it is the electric field at point A is similar to what the electric field would have been if I had a total charge, a point charge Q placed at the center of the sphere. So what we can say is that whether we have a point charge Q placed at the center of the sphere or whether we have a charge Q uniformly distributed over a sphere, the electric field due to both those cases at a distance r from the center of the sphere, where r is greater than the radius of the sphere, is equal to kq over r square. Let us take point B. I am going to use a fresh paper that E. Again, I will use the spherical charge distribution and say that my Gaussian surface that I am going to choose is going to be a sphere. But this time my Gaussian sphere is inside my original sphere. And so if this is my Gaussian surface, it is inside the original sphere. So what I have here is this R of the sphere, whatever is the radius of my Gaussian sphere is less than A for one. Now if I want to apply Gauss law, remember our Gauss law had two parts. First part said that if there is any charge outside a closed surface, that charge does not affect the net flux through the closed surface. On other words, if you remember what it said that for Q outside a closed surface, phi net is 0 and the Gauss law then applies E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon 0. However, what is my Q enclosed here? It is certainly not the entire charge Q because remember the charge Q is distributed over this whole sphere and now we are only considering a part of the sphere and the charge enclosed by that part of the sphere is less then the entire charge Q. So let us first find out what my Q enclosed is for this case. So my Q enclosed is then given by the charge density is sigma coulomb per meter cube and so I can say my Q enclosed is sigma times the volume of this inside sphere which is 4 by 3 pi r cube. However, what is sigma? Sigma was the total charge Q distributed over this entire original sphere. And sigma was basically Q over volume. And so I can write sigma as Q over 4 by 3 pi A cube. Because A cube was my original volume. Times 4 by 3 pi R and so my Q enclosed in this case is equal to total charge Q, this cancel out, R cube over A cube. And let us substitute this in our Gauss law. So what we had was E dot dA. Again, what is going to be E over this Gaussian surface? Let us think about that first. Now we are only thinking about the charge inside the surface. And so, again, the charge is symmetric and I can argue that E is radial at each point on the Gaussian surface. Since the charge is uniformly distributed inside, I can also say that E at each point on my spherical Gaussian surface is constant and uniform and dA is also radial because this is a spherical Gaussian surface. So what we have is this is my E and this is my dA. So E 
and dA at each point are parallel to each other. And so my integral E dot dA then becomes E is constant and theta is 0, so it becomes integral E dA which is the surface area of my Gaussian surface and it is e times 4 pi r squared and that equal to q enclosed which we found out was q r squared r cubed over a cubed over epsilon 0. So this is q over epsilon 0 so you have an epsilon 0 in the denominator and that if we solve gives you e is equal to 1 over 4 pi times q times r over a q epsilon 0 and 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 is k and so I can write this as k q r over a q. And this is what is my electric field at a point which is inside the sphere electric field at point B. Now notice what we see here is that for a given sphere, uh, my Q is constant and A cube is constant. So essentially, my electric field as I go from the center away to the surface of the sphere, my electric field is directly proportional to R and it is increasing linearly as the distance from the center of the sphere increases. And I can show that in kind of a graph. Let me use another pen. And so I am, this is my x-axis and the x-axis is basically telling you what is the distance of, from the center of the point. Then what I can say is that till the point is inside the sphere, my E, let me use another pen and I am plotting E versus R. I can say that till the point is inside the center of the sphere, E is increasing linearly with R. As you can see here, E is directly proportional to R. Versus, the moment I get out of it, out of the sphere, my E becomes inversely proportional to R square. And so, my E is going to drop off like that. At the point on the surface of the sphere, this is the point at which my E is max and this is the point on the surface of the sphere and at this point my E max is equal to K Q over R squared or K Q over A squared because this is the point at which A is equal to R. Alright.